Great is your faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. You never change your compassions, they fail not as you have been you forever will be great is your faithfulness great is your faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see to 
treasures have kept us from making plans as you know but come the morning of the rapture together we'll stand anew while I stroll over heaven with you I want to stroll Troubles and heartaches are vanished away. Then we'll enjoy the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. I want to stroll over heaven. Before you and behind you and beside you all around. 
was very sweet. And people were left. Julie was walking around the farm because we all need to stress for releasers. We were, you know, stressed to the max. Anyway, I was sitting in the kitchen. It was nine, well, it was nine o'clock, and I went in and I said, "Daddy, I need to take your ring off now. You're going to go to heaven real quick." And I went in the kitchen and sat down. And he said, "Mama," and he was gone. That's how my parents lived their life always together they were truly committed in the covenant of the marriage to death do we part for richer for poor they believed that with all their heart so saturday was a down day mama was extremely tired sunday morning six o'clock i was sleeping on the couch she didn't understand why she couldn't be on the couch because they took dad's hospital bed away she wanted her hospital bed taken away they were in the living room positioned so they could see each other and she said to me, my work is done. I need to say goodbye to everybody. She started with John. And all day, people kept coming in. And as we were, we were releasing her to the Lord, she had a, a hymn. She had a verse. She talked to us. It was amazing. 7 o'clock at night, she said, okay, I'm ready to go to heaven. It was like she flipped the light switch, and she thought God was going to lift her up and take her. That's how, what faith she had. And all night, she just slept, and I was sleeping next to her. And at 5.15, I said, Mama, I need to take your ring off now. It's, it's time. You're going to go to heaven quickly. Julie got up, did morning devotions with her, prayed, and then we looked over. She was gone amazing we couldn't have planned it better if one of them would have gone before the other one they would have been miserable this was the most amazing thing we could have happen and so I want you guys to think about this you live your whole life you invest your whole life in people not things you believe in the covenant of marriage you believe in each other and I've got way too many notes here, so let me just find out where I'm at. They had a purpose in life, and they had goals, and they believed in abundant living. They were always joyful. Mama would say, put a smile on your face. I don't care how bad you feel, you put a smile on your face. You pray continually, and you give thanks in all things. And you know what? We were blessed. We were blessed. Now, I was thinking this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning about what I was going to do for the prayer. And we would have family get-togethers, and my mother loved the doxology. So we're going to sing the doxology. And Doran's going to lead us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. There's a hymn that I'm going to invite you to sing together with me. Jesus is all the world to me. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength. From day to day, without Him I would fall. When I am sad, to Him I go. No other one can cheer me so. me glad he's mine 
Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial sore. I go to him for blessings and he gives them more and more. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends the harvest golden grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain. He's my friend. Jesus is Good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to this special service today. And on behalf of the family, I would like to give sincere thanks for celebrating uh, these special lives. And I'd like to begin today with a reading of two of Dora's favorite scripture passages. First, in John chapter 14, the first six verses. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you back to be with me, that you also may know where I am. You know the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Also, I'd like to read from Romans chapter 8, the words of assurance in verses 37 through 39. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, 
nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's an honor to be a part of this special service this morning for Everett and Dora. And if I've never met you before, I'm Tony Van Manen. And Everett was the first cousin of my Oma Trudy, uh, who would have turned 100 in May of this year. Uh, he was also the lifelong friend and fellow dairyman of my Opa, Tony. In fact, uh, the Van Beeks were huge in influencing the Van Manens to move from California and have a dairy in Idaho back in the early 60s. And so I've known Dora and Everett for 49 years. And some of you have known them even longer than that. Uh, when we were growing up, we knew Dora and Everett as Tata Dora and Oma Ape, as legend has it, because of his massive ape-like hands. Uh, you could stack the hands of a normal man, and it still wouldn't equal one of his hands. And uh, so we always, uh, that's what we called them, and, and I know that the people in this room could share stories about this incredible couple for many hours, and uh, humorous stories, and serious stories, and wonderful stories. And yet we're going to summarize their lives and their wishes in mere minutes this morning. When a pastor does a memorial service, uh, he often has to come up with some generic things that he assumes the deceased would want you to know. In this case, we have no such issue. Uh, almost all of what I will tell you this morning comes directly from the mouths and letters and words and dedicated lives of Dora and Eberin. And it's a privilege for me to be using uh, Dora's Bible for this special celebration today. This particular Bible was given to her by Melody for Christmas in 2001. And in just 20 years, it has been incredibly well used. Uh, you can tell that the owner of this Bible was a lover of God's Word. It is underlined and highlighted throughout and I'm going to be mentioning uh, some of the passages that Dora has marked. But you can also tell that the owner of this Bible was a lover of her family. Right in the front, on Everett J. Von Beek uh, note card here, is written a prayer list in her own handwriting with the names of all of her children and grandchildren. And it says at the top, pray for and you can be sure that she did. Uh, she was a prayer warrior, and Everett and Dora uh, were married, as was mentioned, for almost 69 years. In their last moments on this earth, they were still speaking love to each other. If you want to see a for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part marriage, covenant, look no further than Everett and Dora. Uh, their hospital beds, as was mentioned, were arranged to face each other. Their authentic affection was clearly visible. But in those hours after Everett had passed and in the remaining hours she had left on this earth, Dora turned her own focus to heaven and she began to pray for every family member, every child, every spouse, every grandchild, every great-grandchild. Her greatest labor in this life was to make sure that everyone in her family knows the way to Christ. And that was the priority in those last hours. Dora's prayers were powerful. Her faith was often honored by God, and when her bonus babies were young, she prayed that she would live long enough to raise all of her children to adulthood. And God went ahead and added 30 years to her request. Uh, several weeks ago, one of her daughters asked her if she was afraid of dying. No, she said, this is not my home. I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that salvation only comes by his grace. 
I'm a child of God. I know I have eternal life. But I do pray that God will take Everett first so he won't have to be without me. And you know, God answered that prayer too, but he was very gentle with the answer. And I truly believe that God will continue today and in the future to answer Dora's final prayers regarding all of you. Perhaps you're wondering about Everett's faith. His belief in God may have been more reserved like that of many Dutchmen in his era. But it was definitely present. In fact, uh, he first saw Dora when she was singing in a church choir. And he got his first smile from her at a church picnic. Celia remembers ever reading the Bible to them in the old days. His favorite psalm was Psalm 23. And from Dora's Bible, I'd like to read it as we continue words of comfort here this morning. Uh, it's one of the psalms that she had marked. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, Everett's favorite psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the late 70s, Everett's brother had cancer, and Everett said he was going to Holland to find a minister who would tell him the truth. To me, that shows the heart of a believer. And that belief was confirmed by family members even in the last weeks of his life. Of course, Everett, along with Dora, uh, attended Franklin Community Church for decades, and they had many special friends there and truly, truly appreciated their relationship with Pastor Richard and Tammy Mark. Everett and Dora, especially Dora, didn't call attention to themselves. Uh, they were hardworking, God, family, country, community, Dutch community, people. And I know many of you are here today as part of the Dutch commu community. And if you're not, that's okay too. Uh, there are other people other than Dutch people. So, uh, <laughs> But they, they always lived with a spirit of contentment. And you know, one of the hallmarks of their lives is that they were satisfied with the simplicity of life, even in the end. They stuck to their values. Uh, they stayed the course all through the raising of, of their children. They were by no means perfect. Uh, they both knew that no one can work his way to God. No one can earn eternal life through religion or performance. The assurance of eternal life only comes through believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And that's why the promises of God were so precious to them. In my last minutes of sharing, I'd like to walk through some of the things that Dora clearly emphasized in her Bible. And I can't go through them all because she underlined literally thousands of words and verses just in this one Bible. She only had this Bible for 20 years. It looks like she had it for 70 years. Uh, but this is what she would want you to know. And I know this for certain because she clearly and deliberately gave instructions that these things be stressed at this service. And so what I'm about to tell you is her greatest legacy. Dora's greatest wish in this life was for you to know how to get to the next life. And so in respect of her wishes, I hope you'll pay close attention just for a few minutes as I go through these things. 
in the book of Romans chapter 3, Dora marked verse 10. There is no one righteous, not even one. Later in the same chapter, she double underlined, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, Everett and Dora realized that we're all sinners, including them, including me, including you. None of us is remotely close to being righteous enough to work our way to God. As we go further in Romans, Dora marked so many different verses, but in chapter 6, verse 23, I noticed that she underlined a verse in both red and blue. And uh, she had double pins out, I guess. Or maybe she did it two different times. And uh, the verse says this, For the wages of sin is death. The penalty for sin is death. Eternal separation from God. Not physical death, but eternal death. It's the consequence of sin for all of us, and no one is, ex is, is exempt. If you go to church, you aren't exempt. If you give to charity, you aren't exempt. If you take care of your family in a good way, you aren't exempt. Dora highlighted in yellow the words of Jesus to a man named Nicodemus in John 3, where Jesus told him, Whoever does not believe stands condemned already. And so as you sit here this morning, Dora would want you to know that there is nothing you have to do to be condemned. You already are. Just for the fact that you're a sinner. And sinners, whether they like it or not, whether they think it's fair or not, whether they believe there's even a God or not, are condemned already to eternal death. That's the bad news. But the bad news isn't the end of the story. Thank God that Jesus loved all of us so much that he came to this earth on purpose to pay the price for our sins. And from those same highlighted verses in John 3, listen to this. Everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. And the good news is that Jesus has paid the penalty for everyone's sins, including Everett's, including Dora's, including yours. You don't have to pay the price for your sins. Jesus already paid them. I also found double underlined here in Dora's Bible the end of Romans 6.23, which says the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, salvation is a gift. It can't be earned. It can only be accepted. But here's the reality. Anything that can be accepted can also be rejected. And many people have rejected the price Jesus paid for their sins. They've rejected his loving offer of eternal life. Some have rejected on purpose. Some have rejected through ignorance. And some have rejected through complacency. But however it happens, if you don't accept, then you reject. And you face eternal death, what the scriptures call the second death. In Dora's Bible, there's a verse in Revelation 20. It's marked in two colors once again, this time in black and blue. And here's what it says. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, Dora clearly believed God's words here to be true. And you might say, well, I don't believe that. And I tell you, that's your choice. But I want you to remember, choices have consequences. And if you choose to reject the offer of Jesus instead of accept the gift of eternal life, the consequences go far beyond your opinions and your feelings, and your emotions, and your life experience, and your education. According to Dora's Bible here, 
Anyone who dies having rejected Jesus faces eternal death. When eternal life has already been purchased by Jesus on the cross. And it's natural that you might wonder, Tony, how does somebody get this gift of eternal life? Is it a church thing? No. Is it a religion thing? No, it's a heart thing. Some people are going to miss out on eternal life based on the tiny distance between head and heart. Many people have a head knowledge of God. They might admit he exists or say his name once in a while. But receiving eternal life isn't a head thing. It's a heart thing. In Dora's Bible in Romans 10, I found another verse, double underlined. It's a big thing to her. Uh, this time in blue. We find out how to receive eternal life in this verse. She said, uh, her Bible said, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so there it is. Everett and Dora's final wish, that they will see you in heaven, laid out for you directly from the pages of her Bible. I know that in our society, it's very customary when people die, there's always talk about heaven or a better life or whatever. And so many times it's just this generic statement, well, you know, we'll see him again. But it's not really based upon anything other than wishful thinking. In fact, when you dissect the hope that many people have regarding heaven, it's empty inside. Faith is only valuable if you're believing in truth. I'm thankful that Everett and Dora believed in God's truth. They knew that they were sinners who deserved eternal death. But Jesus paid their penalty on the cross and offered them the gift of eternal life. And with their hearts, they believed and received that gift of God's good news. I hope you'll take some time in your heart to reflect on these important words that Dora wanted you to know even this morning. And if, if I could ever do anything to be a help to you, I'm always available. As we continue this beautiful memorial service, we're going to be singing some of Dora and Everett's favorite hymns together. from 
blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine Heir of salvation Purchase of My name is Andrew Evert Cruz, and I am but one of Dora and Evert's 15 grandchildren. 
And my qualifications for being up here are pretty short. Uh, I was convinced to do so, as, as, uh, as you can see, I was willing to be convinced. And also, apparently, um, everyone else was a little bit concerned that they may be too emotional to get through anything they prepared. And I'm not expected to be too emotional, so I'm not sure exactly what that says about me, but, but we'll see how this goes. Although my mom did a fantastic uh, job holding it together, but again, here I am. So with that said, I'm honored to have this opportunity, uh, but feel underqualified to share a few words that could somehow summarize, summarize decades on decades of life and impact. Uh, so where to start? There are so many of us in this room who could share our experiences with Everett and Dora, or as I called them, uh, Papa and Grandma. Some of you have shared your thoughts and stories with me, so I've written this out in an attempt to do my best to represent these memories well, along with sharing a few thoughts of my own. So as we grow up, we can naturally begin to see uh, parents and grandparents through a new lens. We can see them not just as grandparents, but as people. And as I prepared for this, and I heard stories, more stories, about their individual lives and journeys, I've been able to get to know Pop and Grandma a little bit better. I've also been able to consider the decisions they were willing to make and how those decisions have made an impact on me and, and my life, as well as the lives of many others. As I compiled some of your experiences, memories, and stories, uh, some themes emerged about Dora and Everett. First, Papa and Grandma were both ambitious, willing to embrace a sense of adventure, supported by a strong sense of hope. Papa Everett seemed to constantly be driven by his vision and dreams uh, to compete in skating events growing up in Holland, eventually dreaming of coming to America and having a large family and owning his own dairy farm. And at 27 years old, he and his brother Geis each took $70 in a wooden suitcase and spent eight days on a boat before arriving in New York City and then driving across the country to Utah. Eventually, after 12 years of hard work, Everett and Dora would buy their own dairy farm where they would raise their family and spend the last 60 years of their lives together. As for Grandma Dora, her family immigrated from Holland to California when she was only two. She loved school and dreamed of being a teacher. So during a time when women did not go to college, especially first-generation immigrants, she was dedicated to go to her church college. At 17 years old, Dora boarded a bus headed for Pella, Iowa, far away from her home in California. Life there was not easy. She lived with a professor her first year and worked for her room and board. The lady of the home was not an easy woman to get along with, and Dora got up at 5 a.m. to wash clothes on a washboard. And she kept in touch with family by writing letters, receiving a letter back from her mother every Sunday. After graduating, she returned to Bellflower, California, where Everett spotted her singing in the choir at church, and the rest, as they say, is history. My next takeaway, Dora and Everett were kind people. My Aunt Julie shared some stories with me. In her own words, I remember going to California with Mom in 2009, and we stayed in a motel together. Mom talked with the children and the families in the elevator and those getting breakfast. In Seattle, a place where people are not always super friendly, Mom and I were walking on a bike path by the sound, and Mom said hello to everyone. And people actually said hi back. My husband, Randy, shared, of course they said hi to a sweet and smiling 85-year-old woman. My dad was friendly and enjoyed encouraging people. On family vacations, I remember how we would stop by a beautiful farmer yard if the owner was outside working. Dad wanted to tell them, good job. He liked seeing people working hard and doing something well. When he saw Eric Hyden in the 1976 Olympics, he was so excited to see an American speed skater doing well. Eric was just 17, and he finished 17th and 19th in, in, in that Olympics. But my dad was so proud of him that he called directory assistance to Madison, Wisconsin, and tracked down Eric's parents. 
that phone call of encouragement to Eric's parents started a wonderful friendship. Dora and Everett were thankful and generous. More stories shared by my aunts and uncles. Mom and dad were busy running a dairy and raising nine kids. However, they made time for people. Visitors were always welcome. Whether it was fresh cherries, a glass of milk, and a cheese sandwich, we may not have had much, but others were always welcome. Dad invited numerous people to come stay in our home. At the rodeo one year, we met two cyclists that were from the East Coast. Dad loved their story, and after inviting them, they came and stayed for a bit with our family. Mom gave so much for our family, helping on the farm in addition to taking such good care of the kids, polishing shoes, getting stains out of everything, and preparing three meals a day, seven days a week. Dad was a man of his word. He was honest. While in Holland, he borrowed a pair of skates from his neighbor and couldn't return them because the farm was burned during the war. However, even though it was several years later, and he only had $70 when he arrived in America, he thought of that neighbor. Before leaving New York, he purchased wool material and sent it to Holland so that that neighbor could make a new suit. Next, although life wasn't easy, they liked to have fun. One year at, Nam at the Nampa Christian auction, Everett and Harold Boschma got into a bidding war over a jar of grape smuckers jelly. <laughs> Everett won. He paid $800 for the jelly. <laughs> and as he said, it was for a good cause. During Dutch weddings, he loved picking up the bride and groom and carrying them around the room while the rest of the guests sang Dutch songs to them. And there were always the family celebrations to look forward to, in particular, each year celebrating the anniversary of Everett arriving in America. They worked very hard on the farm, but there was always time for fun or rest after dinner and on Sundays, eating at the pancake house, swimming in the canal, riding bikes, going for a drive to see other duchies, going to Gibbons Hot Springs, getting a softie at Jethro's in Meridian or a soda and an Almond Joy. And finally, although their lives included plenty of adventure and new experiences, Dora and Ever Evert valued respect and tradition and centered their faith. Evert's kids share the following. Dad taught us respect. We were to respect God. Prayer time at the dinner table was important. We were to never start eating until mother sat down. We did not talk back to our mom. We did not use God's name in vain. Also, Dad wanted us to stand up straight, look people in the eye, and shake their hand, to greet everyone when we arrived someplace, and to say thank you and goodbye when we left. Dora and Everett were proud Americans and thankful for the opportunities that America provided them. They were also proud of their Dutch heritage. They took seriously their roles as husband and wife, they were intensely proud of their children and their role as parents and grandparents. But they always identified as Christians, first and foremost. I also was able to spend some time going through a few of my grandma Dora's many Bibles and devotionals. As was shared, all marked up extensively with thoughts, prayers, uh, references to other scripture. As I skimmed through them, what stands out to me is just how real and important her faith was. Her faith wasn't simply part of her busy life. It was the lens through which she saw all her life. And all that I've shared, it's been shared previously about the, the person that she was. She, she didn't do these things so that she could have a relationship with the Lord, but rather it was a manifestation of God first in her and then overflowing as an expression of love to others. Her relationship with God was what gave her life. She had no life without the Lord, and in this way, her faith was truly centered. As we live in a world where people are increasingly searching for purpose and meaning, Grandma always made it clear what she wanted most, for her family to know God through their own personal relationship with Jesus. This is not something we can claim or boast, but rather is God's work in us if we are willing. All this brings me to the past few weeks and how quickly we lost them both. 
death in the process involved is never perfect, as all of us who've lost loved ones have learned. It's a product of our imperfect fallen world, so we shouldn't expect it to be. And for those without hope, death is a particularly tragic event. But to be blessed with a long life, to go along with your loving spouse surrounded by family, to be able to say your goodbyes and show strength and peace in the midst of what you know is to come. It's hard to imagine the process being more beautiful. My relationship with Papa and Grandma wasn't as close as my aunts and uncles and some of my cousins. It can admittedly be difficult to fully relate to a grandparent who has experienced a life that's so different um, from your own, but, but that paved the way for the life that I now live. However, what some of us may not have always understood through generational differences, uh, through Dutch accents, these same things have been communicated perfectly clearly through the lives that they lived and the character that they demonstrated. So as I wrap up, I am again humbly just one of many grandkids from one of Dora and Everett's nine children. Uh, and as I look around the room, many of you represent extended family, friends, and members of this community that Everett and Dora were so proud to be a part of. Uh, so thanks for being here to experience with us a bit of sadness, but a little sadness that is entirely surpassed by the joy of lives well lived and an eternity that's only beginning for Grandma Dora and Papa Everett. Good morning. Before I sing, I want to give my little tribute, if I can do it. <laughs> um, Ever and Dora were like an uncle and aunt to us. Um, we didn't have any other family in America other than the Van Beeks, all the Van Beeks. And it's their fault that we live in Idaho. <laughs> but boy, am I glad, because I thought they were, we, my parents were nuts in 1962. I was in the eighth grade and uh, loved California, lived a block away from high school, couldn't wait to play sports in high school. And all of a sudden my folks said, guess what, we're moving to Idaho. And I said, where in the world is Idaho? <laughs> well, you'll find out. It's cold, and it was. It was in March, 1962. Never forget it. And then my mother, my dad was already here and uh, starting the dairy. and. My mom was driving our 1960 Mercury station wagon with um, four or five of us kids. There were six of us, but some of them were born here. But anyhow, my mom said to my brother and myself, well, boys, just think, someday you'll probably marry a girl from Idaho. And we said, hi, you're crazy. But guess what? We both married native Idahoans. But I'm not going to keep going here because there's been a lot of great things said about Everett and Dora. And as uh, Pastor Tony, my nephew, said, we always called him Om Ape and Tata Dora. And uh, <coughs> the thing about Everett was, I'd go see him, and Deb and I, and he'd go, Oh, they numenem hunt ya. And that was my nickname because I was born in Holland in 1948. He can remember my birthday. I told the Jeanette and Ellie that I think, and they said, Oh, yeah, he can remember your birthday but he can't remember ours. <laughs> and anyhow, he used to say that to me every time, every, that was the first time of his mouth, Vainumenem Huncha, because my name was Johannes Adrianus Pamanen, which is John Adrian in English. So anyhow, I love that about him, and uh, I'm going to miss him. And the other thing was, that I want to tell you is that this has become a tradition with the Van Beek family that I sing God Bless America because they were so grateful for America and the opportunity to come and live in this great land and be a part of this great country. Even though they, uh, you know, love Holland and their heritage and their family, um, 
So when my first, uh, his first brother died several years ago, Omi Yun, uh, the family wanted me to sing God Bless America. And then Omi Kais passed away and I sang God Bless America. Then Tut Swan died and I sang God Bless America. So here we are with Everett and Dora, and Jeanette and Nellie said, you're going to sing God Bless America. And I said, well, I already figured that. So <laughs> anyhow, it's great uh, that they're, uh, I, yeah, as I'm an immigrant, but I was only 10 months old, so, you know, I'm really an American. But um, anyhow, I'm grateful for my Dutch heritage and uh, the wonderful family that we have and friends. So if I can make it, I'm going to sing it. God bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her. Through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. with no Dutch heritage, but Julie Van Beek was the first person I ever met coming to Nampa Christian. So our families are intertwined. Jeanette was my sister's best friend, and Nellie and Melody spent lots of time with her, and Julie has been my lifelong friend. So I've taught grandchildren and great-grandchildren now of this family, and I'm very blessed. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to My Savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is Hey. 
Savior, Jesus Christ. Number one, if you would join me in that chorus, prayerfully you know the words, here we go, because he lives, because he Thank you, John and Cheryl, for those wonderful and important songs. Yeah, and I loved both of them. Uh, God Bless America was very special, as was mentioned to Everett, an adult Dutch immigrant to the USA. And Because He Lives was uh, Dora's favorite. In her Bible, uh, in a chapter she extensively marked, John 14, Jesus said, Because I live, you will live also. And that was the certain hope of salvation we talked about earlier. Uh, as we close the service in prayer, Dora would like to invite you to spend eternity with her and Everett and Jesus. 
And so as we pray, I'd like to invite anyone here who has never committed your heart to Jesus the opportunity to receive him during our closing prayer. And if you want to see Everett and Dora again, most of all, if you want to see Jesus who died for your sins, you can accept his gift right now. Would you bow with me? Lord, if there is someone right now in this place who wants to receive you, help that person to understand that there are no magic words. There's no magic prayer for heaven. Just a heart belief in Jesus, dying for sin and rising again to guarantee eternal life. And if you're sitting there right now and you want to have Jesus in your life, tell him right now in your own words, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve eternal death. But you died on the cross to pay my penalty. And you offer me the gift of eternal life. Jesus, I accept. I believe in my heart that you are gone, that you died for me, that you rose again. I want you as my Lord and Savior. I'm turning from my way to your way. And while we're still in prayer, I know this is an informal service. If you pray that prayer, would you just give a wave to Dora and Everett up in heaven? Just give them a wave. God, I thank you for the testimony of faith found in Dora and Everett. We pray for peace and comfort upon those who are now adjusting to life here without them. And we thank you for the hope of eternal life that we have in you. We pray your blessings upon each person and each family represented in this place. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you again for coming to this special gathering this morning. There is a coffee fellowship to follow right here in this facility. And then there will also be an open house today at the dairy uh, from 1 to 4 this afternoon. So God bless you all. You're dismissed.
to me Pardon for sin and the peace that's enduring Your own dear presence to cheer and to guide Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside Great is your faithfulness Great is your faithfulness Morning by morning New mercies I see All I have needed Your hands have provided Great If I surveyed all the good things that come to me from above, if I count all the blessings from the storehouse of love, I'd simply ask for a favor of him beyond mortal king, and I'm sure that he'd grant it. I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day When all our troubles and heartaches are vanished away Then we'll enjoy the beauty where all things are new I want to stroll over heaven see here below but time and treasures have kept us from making plans as you know but come the morning of the rapture together we'll stand anew while I stroll over heaven with you I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day When all our troubles and heartaches are vanished away Then we'll enjoy the beauty where all things are new I want to stroll over heaven stroll over heaven with you